Okay, so hello everyone, and today I'm gonna show you how I've structured my personal statement for my UKS application for computer science. Let's get into it. Now, first thing first, uh, I have left a link down below in the description so that you can have the access to my personal statement that you can see on the screen right now. This is my personal statement. I have one, two, three, four, five, and six paragraphs in total. How many characters I have? I have, I think, 3,967 characters, but let me just still count it, whoop. Okay, so I'm gonna go on a word. Okay, as you can see, I have 3,976 characters. The word count doesn't matter, the character count does. And the maximum characters that you're allowed to write in a personal statement in 4,000 characters. Uh, they're out of the way. Now let's just go through each of these paragraphs a little bit more deeper and then let me just talk you through. In the first paragraph, what I'm doing is I'm just giving an introduction about me and also I'm talking about a few skills that I have learned and that I can directly apply to computer science. But as you can see on the first line over here, uh, I'm saying if I don't understand something, then I deconstruct it to get better understanding and see how the individual element make up the big picture. So basically what I'm saying is that if I don't understand how something works, then I would open it and see it. So for instance, let me see, uh, okay, there you go. So if I don't know how this solar power bank works, what I would do, I would just open it and see how the panel, how the battery are all connected and how they are generating energy, which is not true. I'm not gonna destroy this power bank. The second thing that I'm saying over here, as you can see, so my experience of problem solving skills began when I got a Rubik's Cube. So when I was younger, I used to have those Rubik's Cube. Then I learned the importance of algorithm and also it taught me to stay patient, persistent and focused. Then computer science, sorry about the S over here. It should be in the capital. But anyway, uh, computer science is the only subject where I can apply all of those skills. So what I'm, what I'm saying is uh, I have learned how to stay patient, how to stay persistent and how to stay focused. And I know the importance of an algorithm, a structure, so um, a step, a recipe. Computer science is where I can apply all of those skills that I've learned previously. So what the lecturer or the person who's gonna, lead, uh, who's gonna read my personal statement, well, who did read my personal statement, understood is that I know what to expect <laughs> from computer science. At the very last, I'm saying I'm keen to understand how complex data structure works. What this means is that I got all of those skills, I know what to expect from computer science, what skills I need and what skills I already have, but also I have a goal in future so i want to learn how data works so complex data structure works i know what to expect and i have a goal in future so on the first paragraph they they, they really understood me um who i am as a person what skills i have and what i want to learn in university so now let's look at the next paragraph in this paragraph i'm talking about my it qualification at college and what have i learned by doing it so in particular in this section or in this paragraph i'm talking about three particular modules these are database programming and web development. Now, how did I find out which you need to talk about uh, on my personal statement? The way I did it is uh, I wrote all the modules better, all the units that I have uh, done or that, that I was doing in uh, college, and I compared them to universities. So I picked up, let's say, five universities, or all of those that I wanted to apply for, and I compared them, which modules are similar between these five universities in the first year, second year, third year. Once I found out which modules are similar between these five universities, I compared those modules with my college. So what module I'm doing in college that are similar to university. So I found out that database, programming and web development are similar and therefore I talked about it. The second thing that you can see over here is that I'm giving example. I'm giving example of problems that I have um, that I've solved of projects that I have created and what thing have I learned, understood in these modules. An example of that indeed you can see over here. So I understand how categorizing using normalization can be a solution to avoid any data redundancy. Categorizing using normalization and data redundancy, these are two keywords, so subject terminology. And this can be only understood by my lecturer or those who know about database and about so these particular keywords. Otherwise, the admission department, they would have no idea about what data redundancy or normalization means. Also, you can see clearly that I'm mentioning, uh, that I've understood the importance of um, how a relational database based on a clinic can manipulate data using forms, report and query. So I understood this thing and I know how a clinic can get benefit from it, right? 
so you can Phoenix database can benefit from it. Next, I'm talking about the, the, the procedural programming. So the programming unit, I'm saying that I understood how procedural programming can be useful when dealing with different complexities. And also then I'm, I'm briefly saying what procedural programming means. So the main purpose of procedural programming is to follow a sequence of steps given by the programmer. So therefore I can explain at a high level what procedural programming is. That means that I, I know how to explain it to other people as well. So yeah, um, yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to say over here. And then I'm saying that I have working knowledge of IDE Visual Studio and the Visual Basic Programming Language. So what this means is that even though I have understood the theoretical part of procedural programming and what it is and what it can do, I also know how to use it. So I also know uh, how to use Visual Studio IDE and I also uh, know how to write basic programs in the visual basic program language then as you can see as well as coding the structure of the program I've understood the how form and output to a list box are important for no technical users so also over here as you can see list box is a keyword right is a subject terminology so this can be only understood by my lecture then you can see that I'm talking about my passion of creating websites I found creating website an enjoyable experience this encouraged me to explore this topic further and blah 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 so what this means is that I yes I had web development unit at college but I really liked it so much that I did uh, spend time in my own to explore this further so to explore web development field further and enroll in different courses on Udemy so um, anyway as you can see so what I'm, what I'm doing over here is I'm talking about what I've learned in college what projects have I done, what things I've understood and how I will be able to use it. And finally, uh, something that uh, I really enjoyed and I did explore it further away. In the next paragraph, I'm talking about the two books that I have read, which did influence on studying computer science. So as you can see, I'm talking about uh, the book titled Algorithm to Live By, by Brian Christian and Tom Griffiths. As you can see, I'm giving a short sentence about it. So I learned how a computer algorithm can be applied in a real life situation. And then second book, The Dark Net Inside Digital Underworld. I learned how technology is misused by others. In the next paragraph, I'm talking about my work experience. So I have worked about, I think, two year and a half in my local car repair garage on a voluntary basis. And one thing you can see is that this is relevant to my degree. So I'm mentioning things that is relevant to my degree. So as you can see, one of my main key role at the beginning was to, to develop a spreadsheet model and fully utilize macros to optimize daily repetitive tasks. So this means that I know how to use spreadsheet and I know how to use macros. The next I'm saying that as a result, I have created a reliable invoicing system by integrating macros that print the invoice, save a PDF copy on the local drive and email to the customer and prepare the invoice for the next customer. So there are a few things going on at the background. So when, the, when a person press the, um, the send or whatever button it is, then it will do all of this action at the, at the background. Well, not all of this, but some of this will do at the background. And there are of course many other buttons. But anyway, so what this means is that I have created a, a program and it is working, it is usable by the owner. And next I'm talking about another system that I have created for them that basically manage and uh, signal when an inventory is out of stock. So let's say when a tire model is out of stock to reorder them from the manufacturer. So this is very simple to create guys and you can try it in your own time. Finally, I'm saying something that I am doing currently right now because back then, I was working right now, I'm not, well, from daily basis, of course, not paid for it, unfortunately. So I have made a positive contribution to his business network. So this means that I am actively working there and I'm improving his business management system, which is not true. Okay, in the next paragraph, I'm talking about a role that I had in college, apart from being an ordinary student. So I was a student ambassador and I have developed communication and teamwork and skills. As, as soon as you head student ambassador, you already know what role it is. So what to expect from it. But I still mentioned it. So I still give an example, for instance, I can express my thoughts to, uh, to a wide variety of audience. Similarly, I'm active listener and a keen team player. So they know what to expect from it, but I still mention it. Show them instead of tell them. Indeed, this is a pure lie, guys. So if you have watched my previous video and make sure to watch this video in particular, my UK's personal statement, then you know that this three line is pure lie because I was never an ambassador. I have only enrolled for it. Even I, I did not collect the t-shirt. Here I'm giving an example of what have I done in college aside from being an ordinary student. Finally, on the last paragraph, I'm just concluding in a nice way. I'm just wrapping up all the stuff, just putting all things together. So I'm just saying that um, I know how tough programming can be in university, but I'm still 
I'll be able to make it. I'm, I'm very confident. I'm also undertaking independent research and exploration as part of my learning process. I can manage my time effectively, which is a key thing for university. Work under tight deadlines. And finally, I'm saying that even though I'll go to university and after university, I want to do something. So I have a dream, uh, an achievement in, in, in life. So a goal in life, not achievement, a goal in life. And that is to work with other people, other professional and uh, really work in a data science field. And that's basically the end of my personal statement as well as the end of this video. I hope you like it and found it interesting if you did please leave a thumbs up comment down below if you have any question and guys feel free to email me if you have any question anything that you don't understand or you need any clarification and guys i'll be more than happy to help you thank you for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video goodbye